Welcome to today's Tech Toolbox. I'm Sarah Cordner, CEO of Techmatics, and we're going to go through a couple of little tips, tricks, features, functions inside Techmatics today. And the first question we've had come in today is all about how do we keep organized in terms of our workflows? How do we know which ones are running? How do we know what stuff's going out? It's really important that you are monitoring your emails, particularly those ones that are going out on an automated basis all of the time. And a couple of ways to do that, my favorite way of doing that is quite simply to add myself to all of my automations so that I can see all of my emails that are going out make it a habit to click on all of your links in all of your emails to make sure they're all working click on all of the buttons every time you receive an email to make sure they're working but i'm just going to give you kind of a few little admin things to have a look at today when it comes to your workflows to stay on top of what's going out what's turned on what's not turned on and um, can we just make sure that everything is functioning properly so inside your automated workflows over here there are a number of different ways for you to filter what's on and what's not and now by default usually it'll be your folders that show first now let's talk about folders and staying organized today's a little bit of an organization tip having folders is really really useful to organize all of your different workflows it's just going to help you find things easier even though you do have this search bar here which is always my go-to when I'm looking for stuff but up here by creating folders by pressing this create folder button for instance you might have all of your workflows related to a particular coaching program that you run as an example I've got my concept to course group coaching program and I have a number of workflows for my one coaching program as an example and this might help you so you feel free to be inspired by this I have three different tiers of my coaching program, i.e. three package types in my program. At the moment, I only have two available, but in the past, there have been three. For instance, the baby bear package, the middle bear package, and the daddy bear package, right? The, your bronze, silver, gold, your um, lower end, and your higher ticket end. Now, you would have in the back end of that three automations if you were offering three tiers, because you would need one automation to fire when somebody buys the bronze package. You would need a different automation to fire if somebody buys the silver package, and you would need a different automation to fire if you had somebody buy the gold package. Why? Because they're going to have a different welcome email. Welcome to the gold package. This is what you're going to get. Welcome to the bronze package. This is what you're going to get. And of course, there would be different links for them to click if they had different offerings. As an example, in my uh, concept of course program, my plus package includes a one on one call with me. The lower package does not. So this is why we need different automations, because, you know, it's only the plus package people that are going to be receiving the links to my calendar to book a free call. It's only the people in the plus package that are going to be receiving an onboarding form because I also set up their school for them. So you might in one coaching program have multiple workflows so that you can organize your different experiences that people are having in that program. So this is why, for instance, I would create a folder called Concept to Course Coaching Program to include all of my workflows that relate to that particular program. It's just organization, right? This is a bit, an ad, a bit of admin that we're doing right now. Now, the other thing I do regularly is to actually see which of my workflows are live, right? Which of these workflows in here right now are currently active? And this, you'll be amazed actually how as your technical ecosystem builds, you will turn on workflows that you will forget are turned on. And in 18 months time, <laughs> you may just accidentally realize it's still running and you're like, oopsie, I don't even offer that thing anymore. <laughs> I should have turned that off ages ago. So what you can do over here on the right hand side is click on the filters option and where it says status, drop down to published. So in status, this is going to help you only show, press apply, this will only show you the published or the active or live workflows. And this is basically, I would pop this in your calendar to do once a quarter. So I would go in and put a repeating appointment in your calendar or a repeating task if you're using the Techmatics Tasks Manager, go and pop in your quarterly tasks column in your Techmatics Task Manager to go and check your active workflows. 
because by adding this filter and seeing which ones are currently live, you're going to go through here and go, oh my goodness, that one shouldn't be active anymore. We don't offer that service or that was only supposed to be for a short period of time. You're simply going to go into that workflow. Let's click on it and turn it off. <laughs> All right. So here you just press unpublished, press save. And now that particular workflow is off. So doing this workflow audit is a really important part of your everyday organization and administration management. Now, another thing you're going to want to do to stay organized with all of your workflows is to put yourself inside every single active one. So I'm going to go back to this filter, press status, switch it to published and apply. And I am now going to go inside every single published workflow. Oh, I need to go back to home here and put myself in it. And I recommend you do the same because this is going to give you the real experience of what this workflow is doing and whether it's working. Um, I'm pretty sure inside the execution logs, so over here in the builder, you've got your building area. Underneath execution logs, you, I believe, can add yourself here. Um, so if you scroll where it says select contact and you, you here will see all different people, you can now, oh no, is that not where you add somebody? Sorry, bear with me. Enrollment history. Can you add people from here? I thought you could or run a test. Where's the run a test one? My apologies. Hang on. Oh, test, sorry. My apologies. It's test workflow. It's moved. <laughs> okay. It's moved again. When you're inside the building area here, it says test workflow. There's this button on the top right hand side next to where you publish it. You press test workflow. And this is where you choose the contact that you want to test this workflow. So in this case, I'm going to choose myself, okay? And I normally add a couple of my email addresses just to test it a few times to a few different emails. You press run test, and what it's gonna do is now pop yourself into this workflow. I like to give it a minute, press refresh, then go and check my email. So I'm just gonna give it a second, then press refresh. I now, my email should have come through. So I'm just going to go and check my emails over here to make sure that's come. And it hasn't yet. I actually don't think there's an email in this. Oh, okay. So it's not got um, an email in here. So I haven't received an email because there's no email in this particular one. Um, but we can go to enrollment history. And it should now show that Sarah has been through that. So she's finished that campaign. So if there were steps involved in this, um, let me find one that's got steps in it. I then force myself through the actual workflow to get all of the emails in one go so that I can check them all in one go. So I'm just going to go and find another one that actually has emails in it so that let's see if this one's got emails in it. I can show you what happens. No, none of these test ones do. <laughs> none of these are going to be live. Let me take you to a real account right now just so we can show you what happens with a real when you've got real people in it. Um, I'm gonna go to, let's go to concept of course, because I know that that's live. All right, let's go into this one. So you will see here that there are people at different stages. So here we go. There are three people currently sat at this stage right here. I can actually click on those people and it will show me who those people are. Oh, I probably should have hidden that, shouldn't I? <laughs> but you can move them to the next stage. So if this was yourself at this particular stage, you can simply press move this person to the next stage and go through and do that over and over again to force yourself through each of the stages in your workflow to test it. So again, you do that by clicking on test workflow, choose yourself as a contact, press run test, and then find yourself at each stage and then press force this person to the next stage, force this person to the next stage, and you'll be able to check all of your emails. Alternatively, don't force yourself through to the next stage, just leave yourself in there. And then you're going to receive the actual automated workflow um, to be able to test that it's working. So there is a little tip for you, just on a little bit of housekeeping when it comes to your automations, which was a question from Carol. So thanks for that question. Um, hello, Amanda. Did you have any questions today? 
Anything you'd like us to do a demo on? Yeah, just with that example, like how there was three people in there, what you're saying is you can actually pull one person out of there and force that person through. So if it was like yeah. your name, you would be able to, you don't actually have to force the three who yeah. are already in there. Correct. You can simply go into a workflow. Um, and let me just again find uh, a real one for you here. If I open one up, you can actually pick out a specific person inside your enrollment history over here. And you can go and find a very specific person and then force that contact to the next stage under the enrollment history section of that workflow. So you could do everyone in that stage by just selecting the step here where you have everyone waiting, or you can go into your enrollment history and find the individual or individuals that you would like to force through to the next stage too. Thank you. Pleasure. So the test workflows in the builder, but the this, this second way was inside the enrollment history. Correct, yes. So if you added yourself to that workflow previously, either through test or by going to your own contact record, um, you can push yourself through workflows that way as well. So this is one of the ways that I would do this for myself. So if I'm just going to remove my contact screen just for one second to hide um, contacts here while I switch back to the demo account, just trying to be aware of people's privacy. One second. Okay, there we go. Um, so inside the contacts, always add yourself as a contact in your system. Um, so you do that by simply going to add a contact. And I personally have like every email address I own, I've added Sarah email address one, Sarah email address two, Sarah email address three. You've just go into here, you press add contact, just go in and add yourself as a contact with every email address that you have so that you have loads of test accounts inside the system. What I then do is if I go and find Sarah Cordner in this account here, so there's Sarah. Um, if I do ever create a new workflow or I've got something, you know, a new automation that's about to begin, inside your contacts record here, scroll all the way down to where it says workflows. And now I add Sarah Cordner myself um, to a workflow. So we press add. And now let's pretend I want to check the concept to course workflow. I can't, this is a pretend account, so it's not in there. But let's pretend I want to um, test this particular course workflow. Press add. Now this Sarah has been added to this particular workflow. So again, if you give it a second, it will update. I like to refresh my screen always just to uh, refresh it. But now it will say Sarah is in this workflow and now I will receive all of my own emails. I'm going to receive all of my own notifications so that I can test and check all of my emails all of the time. And I am in real time receiving the same emails as all of my students and customers. So I can basically keep my finger on the pulse as to what's going on. Cool. Any other questions? Amanda, are there any demos or any feature areas, anything that you're working on over the next month that you would love a bit of a demo on? Um, actually, yeah. <laughs> Membership. Something has happened to ours, and I don't know if it's like something that you've done in the background, which is totally fine. I love that you guys are doing things in the background, but we feel like we had a membership site that had a very clear like welcome page to like, hey, come and click here to become a member. Mm -hmm. it's kind of disappeared um so that's the thing like that member site i think is something i'd love to know a little bit more of okay so when you say come and become a member that should always be some kind of web page that you have on your website so it should definitely be you know amandalambros.com forward slash academy or forward slash yep. courses. Yep. Um, I recommend that because that's indexable on Google and that's how a lot of people are going to find you. And it's a tab on your menu on your website. And that page should basically say, this is what my membership's about. This is what's included. Click here to join. And that click here to join should be going to the checkout to your yep. membership. Yeah. So you've got that bit. 
Yep, got that. Okay, what you're talking about now is now I am a member, you mean my login page. So when yes. I go to login, yes. So recently there was actually an update um, whereby the members portal is now a different login to the old courses portal that you did have before. Um, so in fact, Febby, I'm gonna pick on you right now because Febby does all of my student access login information. Um, so Febby, if you're there, would you mind turning your screen on for a second? If you're available and i'm actually going to ask Fez. Oh, it's lunch. I saw yeah it. Sorry. oh sorry were you on another call no, no it's okay it's okay oh, apologies can i possibly febby put you in the driver's seat and just ask you to share your screen and show us where you find the student portal login link so that we can um we everyone knows where what link they need to be sharing with their students who are already students so that their students can log in okay sure sure <laughs> And while, whilst Febby's just doing that, um, again, to just reiterate here, your own course landing page, website, web page, funnel page, it doesn't matter what, should be the place you're sending people to, yourwebsite.com forward slash courses, yourwebsite.com forward slash academy, whatever you've chosen that domain to be. And the join the membership or join the course button should be linking to the checkout to that product, which is usually an offer. Okay, so you've usually created an offer, you've got the link to that offer, and that's the link that's attached to the buy button of your course, your product, your program, your academy. Now, when somebody becomes a member, they've joined your course, they've joined your coaching program, they're gonna receive a welcome email. And inside that welcome email, it's one of the things that should be in there, it should be, thanks Sarah for joining the membership. Um, here is your student login URL, and this is the URL that you now need to use every time you log in to your portal to watch your courses. So Feb's going to take over the screen and uh, share her screen in just a second and show you where you access that. If in the meantime, anyone's got any questions or anything else you'd like us to demo while we're on the call today, please drop those in the chat. And um, if there's anything I can demo for you today, I would be delighted to. So yeah. Aaron, yes. Yeah, that, that's the similar thing that I'm facing is that I've made the the page with all of the courses on it inside Techmatics as a gallery mm -hmm. you know, in the funnels, I think. Um, should that have been on my own website? Uh, as in like a directory? Yes. No, that's not at all. I mean, I definitely would always also have all of my courses available like as a directory on my own website. Um, however, it's absolutely perfectly fine having them inside your, you know, your portal, your own course inside Techmatics, because when I do log in, I can still see there's two tabs. There's one called all courses and one called my courses. Mm -hmm. When the student by default, when they log in by default, they see all courses, which yeah. will show them all of the courses that I could buy from you. And so I can buy straight from that from that dashboard and it basically acts like a directory. When I click on my courses, when I'm logged into your portal, um, I can um, see all the ones I've already purchased. So it's definitely good having them on Techmatics, but I also would have some kind of like carolbiddis.com, yourwebsite.com forward slash courses. So again, you send people to your website so that it's your website that's receiving the tra traffic from oh. there. I then click mm -hmm. the course I want yeah. to buy. Yeah, so it's it. Yeah, I think I'm. Let's come on. Let's do it. Are you ready, Fabs? Um, wait. Okay, sorry, I completely threw you in the deep end there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. So let me share my screen. Okay. Oopsie. Sarah, on that note, to follow up with what Carol was saying, say I have fifty courses but I have people that I've trained in an advanced program that I only want access to five of those courses, but I don't want them to see all my other 45 courses. Is there a way of kind of secluding five and making sure only Sarah can see those five and never my other 45, but anyone else who comes through a different link can actually see all 50? Oh, that is a tad more... Um... That is a tad more advanced in terms of doing groups. I believe you can do that under groups now because we've now got the groups feature in there. Let me write that. I'm going to write down hidden courses in just a second. 
Um, because Febby, I believe, knows how to make courses <gasps> hidden as well. Just bear me one second. So we've got hidden <gasps> courses, but you're also taking it one step <gasps> further than hidden courses. Um, exclusive visibility to groups. So I'm going to call it groups visibility. Sorry, I've got someone knocking on my door right now. Perfect understanding. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, groups visibility. I may have to come back to you and do a demo video on that one separately because that's the groups visibility is quite a new feature. Um, however, um, the answer is semi yes to that, um, that I can confidently say in that inside the communities area, you can create groups of students. Sorry about the dog. Um, and inside that groups, you can assign access to specific courses just to people in that group. So the answer is yes, but let me talk, see how that applies on a wider scale on the actual dashboard as well. I don't know whether that's just limited to the communities area or if that applies to the dashboard too with this latest update, but I will definitely do a video for you on that one because that's a good question. How are you going, Febby? She's screen sharing, she's here, awesome. So what we're showing you right now is what link do you give to your students in the welcome email when they buy a course from you but also when you get that question i've forgotten which link i used to log into my portal how do i log in to view the courses again you're going to go no worries let me grab that for you so febby is going to show you just now Yes, so currently i am in a demo account so when you do that go to courses and memberships and then go to courses and then go to settings. From here, you can see the costume domains. Um, since this is a demo account, we don't have anything here, but um, by now you should be able to connect that if you have that link. Yeah, for Sarah, I have this <laughs> link that I always send to her students when they get lost. But uh, this is where from the courses and then um, settings. Yep. And then um, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's where we get it. And then in the email settings, this is where um, you uh, customize the emails that you send out to students if they sign up. Yeah, I think this is a demo account. I don't yes. see any of the emails. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Febby. Um, now this, because there's no private information, I am happy for you to switch to Sarah Cordoner's account right now, just to show them where we find our student link that we give to students to sign in. Um, and you can see here the emails that we have as well. So I'm very happy for this to be shared because there's no private customer information on this. So Femi's oh, okay. going into courses and memberships. And then if uh, she's hovered over the courses menu at the top and clicked down to settings. Yes, yeah, okay. settings and then email settings. And then this is where you edit the emails that you send out to students. Yeah, for Sarah, it's this one. So you need to uh, build this using the email builder and then use the template um, in the settings. Yeah, wait. Yeah, so here, and then this is the link where they log in and then um, all the other stuff. So yeah. all we have in this welcome email, so just to clarify there, once you've got your domain connected to your Techmatics account, um, here you will have where it says send a welcome email. Um, there's a drop down box there available. So if, if you just click on that drop down box, yours will at the moment just say default or something like that, default email. Um, but what you can do is you can go into your email builder and from there you create your own email using your master template and make it say something like hello first name welcome to my community or welcome to I mind says welcome to Sarah Cordoner's courses community here is your login link and we'll show you again where to get that here is your login link you just paste in the generic login link if you've got any questions let me know whatever you want it to be now once you have built that email in the email builder that will now show up as an option inside these courses email settings area 
So that can be completely then customized as to how you want it to be. Now, please bear in mind, because we're in the generic courses email building area, that welcome email here will go to everyone who is given any kind of access to any product in your courses area. So you do need to keep that in mind. Do not make it course specific. Do not make it product specific. This is going to go to everyone, no matter what they've bought or opted into as a freebie. It's your workflows where you have your very specific emails per product. So if I do buy program A, there's going to be a separate workflow for program A that's going to say, hi, first name, thanks for buying program A, here's what you get, and then whatever automations follow that. This is the one off email they'll get the first time they ever buy anything or opt into anything from you. So that's the, the first thing that we need to do here is go and create and write that email template. Now, the second thing we need to do is then just go and grab that login link. So, Feb, if I can just get you to pull your screen up again, that's just to confirm where you find that login link. And, Feb, I'm happy for you to just share the Sarah Cordner account there. Um, what's the link that we put in that email? Here's your login to your portal. So, you're in your courses area. feb has gone up to courses tab. So, you see here um, in, the, in my template, it just says, here's the login to your portal. She's gone down to the settings area and in custom domains this is the link that we give to our students for them to log in to our courses is that right Fabs? is that where you get it yes that's right yeah mm -hmm. great hang on isn't ours different ours is um client mm -hmm. club now or something that's yes right, yeah yeah, yeah can be i here. also add something with that yes Okay, got it. Maybe I'll just let Phoebe fin uh, finish, then I'll edit. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, Nat, you can take over. Okay, got it. So let me just share my screen. Uh, this is actually from the new update. So we just got it like prior weeks. It's so, the new portal link we're looking for, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, got, got it. So you need to head over to your websites and funnels, client portal and dashboard. So just bear in mind what Febby was showing you then inside the, the custom domains, you must have your domain linked in there before you do this next bit. OK, so you have to have that set up first with your domain link. Then you need to come and follow what Nat's going to show you now for your unique portal li login link. I okay, got it. So for the portal link, you got, you're going to go to settings and then uh, domain setup. Basically, the domain setup will be the same with what you got into the courses. So in this case, we have communities.technetics.com. So that would be the login link that you're going to share with your clients or your students. So that would be the default mm -hmm. login link for your uh, for your courses, communities, and affiliate, because this is the link for your portal. And let's have, for example, uh, I think I'm currently login. Let me just go to incognito so it will be clearer. So this is going to be your website at courses.yourwebsite.com is mm -hmm. uh, sort of the subdomain that you'd have in your courses domain settings area. Yeah. So this would be like your login page. And let's have, for example, if going to if you're going to send someone the login link or their like uh, login credentials, what you're going to do is you need to go to the client portal dashboard and you might need to maybe send them a magic link so they can automatically log in with their like student portal access. Or you can also invite them to the client portal. Or if they're an existing student, you can send their login email through here and then look for their name on their contact. So this is what goes. Yeah. So what we're talking about first, before we confuse it, is just the generic link, which is the one underneath this. So the invite mm -hmm. to client portal um, is, sorry, for, um, Nat, if you just click out of that. So where it says invite to client portal, if you click on invite there, Oh, no, sorry, that's the individual. Where's the generic one? It's the one above where it says client portal URL. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, this one. Yeah, so that's your generic link that you're going to put in that generic welcome email, okay? Mm -hmm. That's under websites and funnels, client portal, and then you've got your client portal URL. That should be the one that you're sending out to everybody. Yes. But what yeah. Febby's showing, uh, Febby, what Nat's showing you here are uh, some other options for sending your students access links. Your magic link is where Nat's cl clicked on here. This one's really cool because this will automatically take an individual straight inside their account. Because what it will do is it will pre-fill 
with that client's link and login email address to take them straight there. So you can see here, Nat's picked herself. She's pressed generate. There's the link. Now she could have actually emailed that to herself as well. So she just pop popped in her name there and she could have just pressed email and boom, it would have instantly sent an email to her saying, here's your login link. So that's another way that yourself or your administrators um, or administration team can send out people's information on the fly if they're you know, sending you emails saying, I've forgotten how to log in. I've lost my original email with my login details on it. That's where you can do it. And boom, you can see here now, because Nat just sent herself um, that magic link, even now she's in an incognito window that doesn't recognize her, it's taken her straight to the portal. So that's what the magic link does. Well, that's that a new, new feature, the um, client portal. Client portal, yeah. So you go into, first of all, your courses, yeah. settings, and add your custom domain. Then you go into websites, client portal, settings, and here you will find your, um, your overall client portal link that needs to go in your welcome email and your magic links or your invite links or your automatic login email all on this page here. So if you've got VAs working for you, this is the page you need to tell them to go to, websites and funnels, client portal. This is where they can give your students access. If you ever have anyone inquiring, how do I get in? I've lost my link. That help? Yes, thanks. Awesome. All right, I'm just gonna see if there's any more questions in the chat, no? Uh, has anyone got anything else that you would like me to give you a demo for or ask the tech team here to show you how to do? Yes, Richard, hi. Hi there. Um, is Hello. it possible to, in the um, AI, automatic AI chat feature, uh, yes. me messaging, is it possible to have more than one URL that the AI gets information from? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so let me just um, take you into what we're talking about here. Um, inside your settings and then conversation AI, if you have any websites or funnel pages built on Techmatics, you now have an AI bot that will answer inquiries for you, book calls for you, and learn your entire website. Now note that this um, works only on domains that have in some way been connected to your Techmatics account and where those pages are actually hosted on Techmatics. Okay, so that is something you do need to be aware of. But yes, what we can do here is we can add in, if we've got multiple domains connected to our account, we've got multiple pages connected to our account, it will scrape all of those sites. So yes, you might have sarahcorden.com, you might have maintraining.com, techmatics.com, candlemaking.com, whatever, <laughs> right? You can absolutely keep training it on all of those different prompts. And down in the ad Q and A's, if you want to um, get the bot to understand those different businesses, just make sure that you've added really clear Q and A's where if they mention the word candle, the system has a query that is like, here is the candle building website, www.candlebuilding.com. So again, it will know, the bot will be trained to know that if someone mentions that particular keyword, it's this website it's gonna refer people to. If they mention this keyword, it's gonna refer them to that particular product, for instance. But yes, you absolutely can put different URLs in here press get data and train it again and again and again on all those different sites they have to be hosted on techmatics or they can be hosted at the moment it does yes or have a subdomain for instance on techmatics basically any page funnel or website that is hosted on your techmatics account this is the optimum um the optimum way for this conversation ai to work okay thanks sarah pleasure that was a great question. Thank you. Any others? So back to that, that won't work for my, most of my information is on the musicalchild.com.au, not yeah. on Techmatics. Yeah, so what you can do is you could, for instance, make sure that you've copied and pasted all of your blogs into your Techmatics blogging platform, because then it can scrape all the knowledge and information from your blogs. And I actually do this with Sarah Cordner. 
I have a really old 13 year old website that's on WordPress to transfer that over to Techmatics is just it just defeats the point the amount of work that would take so I actually still have my Sarah Cordner site on WordPress because moving it would just be an administrative nightmare. Techmatics, of course, is on Techmatics. But what I've done is I basically got um, a, a, a VA, a team, to just go and copy all of my Sarah Cordner blogs and also put them on Techmatics under my sarahcordner.com Techmatics account. So now my Techmatics account does actually understand all of the stuff that Sarah see, teaches and says and has to offer because I've put it in the blogging area too. And we now have an administrative system in the background where whenever Sarah publishes a new video or social media post, put it on Sarah's blog and also put it on Sarah Cordner's Techmatics blog so that now we are getting that bot to be able to learn everything I do even though my my, uh, my main Sarah Cordner business is on Techmatics, uh, is on WordPress. And I do this as well, um, for instance, where I've got products that are on external websites, like for instance, my concept of course coaching program is still on my WordPress site. I want my bot in Techmatics to know all about that program so that it, it can answer incoming inquiries. So all I've done is copied the entire text off of my landing page, the sales page for that product. And I've put that as a blog inside the blogging area on Techmatics account. So it's learned the products, boom. So, and that would cost you, honestly, if you go on Upwork or something, grab yourself a VA for like, you know, five, six hours, they could probably pull over everything you've got in that time. What, what, what? That's unbelievable. That's exactly what I need to know today. Yeah. So this is a great workaround. You know, there's always a solution to everything. I hope that we get to a point where that AI bot will work on external platforms. Um, you know, tech's moving fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, at the moment, that is the best workaround you could possibly have. And that was exactly the question that was eluding me for the whole session. How do you work your web, your WordPress site and your Techmatic site to make them talk to and sing? Yeah, okay, well, this is another brilliant question. For those people who are using external websites or landing pages or sales pages or funnels to Techmatics, there are a number of ways that you can still integrate. First one is WordPress has a free plugin that connects to your Techmatics account. It's called Lead Connector. If you need help connecting your Lead Connector Techmatics plugin to your Techmatics account, please do contact one of our support team because it's a free plugin. It's like adding an app to the back of your WordPress website. What that will do, this is what happens, is every time one of your contacts visits a page on your website, it will track that activity in their client record. This is called activity tracking. If I go into contacts over here, I'm gonna pull up myself in this demo account and I wanna show you how this works. Let's find Sarah Cordoner, wherever she is. Uh, oh, that's inbox, I wanna to go to contacts, my apologies. I wanna show you why this is important. It's called activity tracking. Um, here's Sarah Cordoner. Now over in the client's record where you've got this um, activity over here, this will show you all the pages that Sarah has visited. These are web pages that Sarah's gone to. So if you've got your external website, um, it will be able to track that in Sarah's record. Of course, this only works if they're already an existing contact. But also it shows you, of course, if you've got any pages on Techmatics or any funnels on Techmatics, it also will show you that as well. So you've got a whole journey here of everything this particular customer has done inside their contact record. So that's one way that you connect your external websites to Techmatics is via the free plugin. Now, if you haven't got WordPress and let's say you're using Wix or Square or something like that, no worries. There are lots of different ways that you seamlessly connect your Techmatics account with another website or web page. That is simply replacing your opt-in forms with whatever opt-in form you had in there before with your Techmatics opt-in forms. So you, you know, whatever website you've got, it's gonna have some kind of page builder on it. You simply pull over the code element and you paste in the form code to your opt-in forms that are built in Techmatics. So your website might be on Wix and I fill in your join your email newsletter form. That form is a Techmatics form. So that adds me as a contact to your Techmatic system, adds me to your welcome workflows, whatever you've got set up there, it's seamlessly part of your Techmatics account. The other way 
is adding in your Techmatics live chat widget. So you can actually add a chat widget to an external website to enable people to give you their contact details. So you can do that. I believe it's actually inside websites, isn't it? Let's go back to websites, websites and funnels. Okay, in websites and funnels, you have here chat widget. Nat, can you please correct me if I'm wrong? Does this only apply to um, websites on Techmatics? Or no, it can be embedded to WordPress or weak sites. So any external websites. <laughs> Good. Okay. I just wanted to double check that it's here. <laughs> so you press get code up here and this will allow you to have this pop-up chat widget on an external website, which is cool as well. Again, if you need help with that, you can hire one of our tech experts for 30 to 60 minutes. They can do all this for you. They can help set it up, make sure it's in all of your branding, make sure it's all connecting seamlessly. If you want them to do that for you as a service, 50 bucks, you're done. All right. That's nice and easy. Um, and the other way that you can connect any external website page or funnel to your Techmatics account is simply with hyperlinks. So for example, um, let me see if I can find a real example here, my sarahcordoner.com website over here. Oh, it's taking me to free stuff page. Um, this is hosted on uh, WordPress because it's so old and so big. <laughs> but here, here's opt into my free stuff. That is my Techmatics form. That's a form I made on Techmatics. So when somebody joins my email list, it adds them as a contact in my Techmatics system. But you can do up here, for instance, if somebody um, wants to book a call with me, let's go here, on my contact page, for instance, let's give it a second to load. Again, the contact form is a Techmatics form. The subscribe button takes them to a form that's built on Techmatics. There it is. There's my Techmatics subscribe form. And the calendar section, this is on my contact page, sarahconnor.com forward slash contact. This calendar is a Techmatics calendar. I've put all of these appointments that people can book with me and put them in my Techmatics calendar. So when somebody goes, yeah, I want to book a 30 minute call with Sarah, they can come along here, find my next available appointments. It's going to take it a minute. And this will literally book them into my Techmatic system. The other thing you can do is if you've got like a tab up here, for instance, you might have a tab called courses, right? Here, if you just had a courses tab, that can hyperlink and just redirect people to your URL for all of your courses that are hosted on Techmatics. So Carol just gave me an example here that she's put all of her courses on her Techmatics portal. So she would go into, for instance, her courses and membership area here. She's got inside, in fact, I'll take you to the portal. Let's, we've, let's say we've set up our domain already. Under websites and funnels, client portal, dashboard. Let's click on here. She would grab this URL that's her portal to her courses, copy, and on her website where it says courses, simply put that link to her courses portal. So when I go to Carol's website, I go to your website, I click on your courses menu tab, it just sends me straight to your Techmatics courses portal, where of course I can see and buy all of your programs. Boom, there are a number of different ways that you can connect your Techmatics account to any external site, page, funnel, or website seamlessly. That helps. Cool. Thank you so much. Yes, I I do have some clunky ways that it, they get through, but I think it can be really uh, much improved after that explanation. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so Amanda says, can we still access Yoast? So Yoast would be um, a plugin that you personally obviously would have to in add to your own WordPress website. That's not an included service that we have at Techmatics, no. Sarah. Yes. Is there a way to bring a lead that comes in through Outlook to put that con those contact details into Techmatics easily? Yes, that's absolutely automatic. So if you have connected your Outlook account to your Techmatics account, any email you receive from that point onwards will automatically add that person as a contact to your Techmatics CRM. Um, the other way that you can do this is you go into your Outlook account, you press contacts, export, 
export all of your contacts and then import them into your Techmatics contact database area. And that will make them contact. And um, from that point onwards, as soon as you have connected your Outlook account, like I said, any incoming emails that you get from that point onwards will then add that communication into that client's record and it will start saving all of your interactions in their client record from that point onwards. Mm-hmm. It's not retrospective, it won't pull in historical communication prior to them being added as a contact, but from them being added as a contact onwards, it will. But if they're not already a contact, I don't think it works. Uh... I'm wanting to. So you need to make them a contact first. So what I would like I say, what I do first is step one: go to your Outlook account, export all of your contacts, and then import them to Techmatics so that their name and email address exists in your system. And then on top of that, go into your integrations area and make sure you connect your email service. So inside settings and integrations down here. I've got that happening. Yeah. Oh, you've got all that happening already. Okay. Yeah, awesome. but the, but the, these are new inquiries that they find the email on the on the website and then send an email. So they're a new lead that isn't in Techmatics. Uh, want to get their contact details into Techmatics. Yeah. So if you've got that contact form, that inquiry form, they should. Oh yeah, that works. Name, yeah, they should be putting in their name and email address in order to send you um, any kind of inquiry. So that's absolutely what you should be doing is like exactly like I've got with Sarah Cordner. Yeah, I've got that, but still people send a direct email sometimes. Oh, yeah. So as, as long as you've got Outlook connected and you've got two-way sync turned on, and this is the same with Gmail, by the way, anyone using G Suite, that contact will automatically be made a contact in your Techmatics account as from that point onwards. So anyone who, if you've got your email account set up correctly and it's got two-way sync turned on if I email you today as a brand new stranger that will automatically make Sarah a contact in your Techmatics account Mm, it will be doing that and if it's not then you may not have your two-way sync turned on so I would uh, I would jump into the chat box when you're logged in and just ask them how can I check my two-way sync is turned on please yeah all right good thank you so you need to have a pretty clean email box. Yeah, well, there's there's a, there's two very different parts of understanding the contacts. And so <laughs> one way you need to understand contacts is you have your contact database. So you could have hundreds, if not millions of contacts in your system, but then in your smart lists, only the people who have opted into email communication can actually be mass emailed, right? So you have your email marketing area, smart lists, And then you have all contacts, anyone you've ever got contact information from. And so personally, what I did is I went through all my old Gmail account, all my old Outlook accounts, all my old Hotmail accounts, everything. I exported every contact I've ever had, put it into my Techmatics account, but only the people who have ever opted into my mailing list to receive mailing email information actually go in my smart list called mailing list. So I've actually created a smart list called mailing list. And the people who are on that are only people who have ever filled in an opt-in form. So you see there how you do contacts, everyone you ever communicate with, and then mailing list, only the people that you can send mailing campaigns to. Got it. (laughs) Need help. Yeah, and so yeah. if you're looking to get help with that, um, you know, 50 bucks, book a call with a tech expert, they'll come and take over your screen with you, help you do all that exporting and importing with all the right fields mapped, all the right tags, and help you set up a mailing um, smart list. If you want help with that, for $50, um, just click on the services page on the Techmatics website, um, and that's where you can book that um, one hour $50 service for someone to come into your account and just help you get that stuff done. Yes, Joanne. Um, I am not. <clears throat> I, my email list is very old. Mm-hmm. So is there something I can do to find out if they're still active? Yeah, absolutely. So with the new email requirement changes that came into effect on the 1st of February 2024, if you have an email to contact within the last eight weeks, they're considered a dead contact. Um, and your chance of a bounce rate and therefore potentially harming your sending domain 
is extremely high and very risky. So a couple of things we do first. First of all, we've just automatically turned on email verification by default in Techmatics. This means if you are uploading a new list, the first time you email anyone, um, it will verify whether that email address is actually live or active or not. And if it's not, it will actually automatically DND that contact, do not disturb that contact, meaning it won't allow mm -hmm. campaigns to be sent to them, thus protecting your sending domain. So first of all, that's one fail safe we have in place for you. But what I would be doing is, um, let's say you've got loads of old contacts, I would just simply email them one by one from Gmail or whatever service you've got connected to your Techmatics account and just say, you know, hey, first name, um, it's been a while since I was last in contact. I've actually just moved my, um, my email sending to a new platform and um, mm -hmm. I just wondered whether you'd still like to be on my mailing list or not. If so, um, just click here or, um, you know, get back to me within 48 hours or fill in this form. Okay, give them the option I preferably would get them to fill the form in because then you've done the right thing by GDPR standards and privacy and you've got proof they opted in, right? So that's basically called a double opt-in. It's when you have just verified with them. Now, of course, there's gonna be a lot of people that don't get back to you, won't fill it in, cool. Just add them as a contact only in your system. You're better off to have a small quality list today than a big one that could get you in trouble. So that's what I would be doing with um, a new bunch of people or people who haven't messaged in ages. So that form is part of the email that I will be sending them? I would, yeah. So what I would do is I'd go into Techmatics, click on Websites and Funnels. Um, let's go over here, Websites and Funnels. Then click on Forms, Form Builder. And I would create a new form called um, Add Me to Your List. And then there's a very important setting that I'm going to turn on here. So first of all, make sure that you have actually added everyone as a contact to your Techmatics account first. So go export that contact list, import them to Techmatics, because now that means they're a contact in your system. You can do something on here called a sticky contact which means it will pre-fill their form information for them, making it even easier to fill in. So here I pressed add a new form. I would call this um, stay in my email community, for instance, like something like that. Um, remove phone number, definitely. Um, I would probably even go as far as removing last name from here. So I'm gonna delete that. All I want is their first name and their email address. So um, I would simply have first name, email, and in here, reword this however you want it to be worded. I, I, I always like to put my name in here because it makes it feel more real. Mine says something like, I agree to receive communication from Sarah Cordoner because that makes them go, oh, I know her. You know, it's not some big dodgy company. It's, it's Sarah. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. what you're going to do then, press save, always press save at every opportunity. In this little settings icon, it's very small. It's underneath the save button on the top right corner. In that little settings button, button um, you want to click on options, this options tab here. Um, you, first of all, can put a little pop-up message where it says, what happens when they press submit? Um, a little pop-up message saying, you know, thank you, you're now on my email list, or, you know, I'll stay in touch with you, success, whatever you want to say to them. But keep scrolling down to the very bottom of this options section, and you have something here called sticky contact. Turn that on. And I actually recommend you turning this on every form you create. What this does is mm -hmm. if this person is already a contact in your Technatics account in any form, it will automatically pre-fill their information on here. So this is really cool because if their email address has changed or they want to be called a different name, them just editing it will actually update their client record, which is which is awesome. <laughs> um, but also it just it saves them having to take another step of filling the thing in. All they're going to have to do is go, oh, Bing, it's already filled in. Stay here. Save. Boom. So that is what I've been doing. Now, then you've got your integrate button here. This gives you your form link. That's your form link right here. You can open that in another page just to, to have it in that email, that reactivation email, I, I might call it. <laughs> um, I would say, 
paid first name, this would be a manual email because obviously you're not allowed to add them to a mail out or anything yet. Um, I just say, you know, hey, Joanne, um, I hope you're doing well. It's been ages since I was last in touch. I'm just actually moving my email platform over to, over to another system. I just wondered if you wanted to stay in touch with me or not. Um, if you do, please may I have your permission to move you over to my new platform. Just um, simply click this button um, and press submit. So that now you've already added them as a contact, it's going to pre-fill the info. They literally are only going to have to click that form link and press submit. And you now have done the right thing by verifying and getting the explicit opt-in from that person to now be part of your mailing list. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. Is that helpful for everyone? Yeah. Sarah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I've, I'm seeing that some of my email contacts now are not verified. And support mm -hmm. suggested I, I verify everybody in the list. Um, but you referred to turning on verification automatically. So, but like prior to the entry going in. So, um, so what will where, happen? Where do, you, where do you do that? Um, so, if you um, don't want to use Techmatics's in house verification system, so basically the in house version does this. Now we've we've turned it on for everyone's account. The next time you send an email to any contact, that email address is going to be verified by the system. It will only verify each email address once and that's it. Okay, so if you don't want to use Techmatics' system, um, please let us know that you want it turned off and you would need to then go and export all of your contacts and send them into something like Neverbounce, which is also a paid service, and get it cleaned there. But Techmatics' in-house system does exactly the same thing. It will verify them um, the first time you send an email. That's like the, the new thing. If that email doesn't verify, it won't send the email. So it's gonna protect your domain. If, um, uh, for instance, the system um, doesn't verify an email address that you know is actually real and live, you can simply manually go into that client profile and just turn the DND off again. So that will then, you know, it will say unverified, but you can manually turn off the do not disturb so that they still receive emails from you. Because I have seen that in mine, it, for instance, has um, said that some email addresses, particularly the really generic ones, like the admin at and the info at, um, some of my email addresses in my contacts have said this um, is an unverified email address because it's generic and it put DND on them. So I, but I knew that that is a genuine client and that actually is their preferred communication email. So I just had to manually go into their account and just turn off their do not disturb because I knew that they did want to receive emails from me. So you've just got to be aware of that as well. Someone says, I haven't been getting your emails. That might be why. But again, much better to be in that situation than to be having uh, your sending domain shut down. <laughs> So Sarah, now that I've verified all of my contacts, has yeah. that undone some DNDs, do you think? Um, good question. I will have to double check whether it undoes DNDs. I don't believe it does automatically undo DNDs. It turns on DNDs, but it doesn't turn them off. Because if someone has DND'd, the system has been told this person doesn't want to be communicated with. The only way to turn off a DND is either through a workflow or through manual button clicking. Okay. And is there an easy way to set the time zone? Because every contact that goes in, you've got to search, scroll down to find the time zone, which is... Oh, yes. I saw this the other day. Let me just go in because we had this exact same issue where it was automatically setting everyone to an Aussie time zone. And here it is right here, down the bottom of your form. So inside your form builder, under this little icons, op options, underneath your sticky contact, it says enable time zone. So what this will do is it will capture the time zone of the IP address that this contact is filling the form in. So you do have to be aware of the fact that some people are using VPNs, which are hiding their IP address, or saying they live in Israel when they live in Australia. So it's not gonna work for everyone if they're using a VPN veil. However, the majority of people's IP addresses are publicly available to software like this. And um, so if you've got this enable time zone turned on, on all of your forms, it will update that contacts record with the time zone that they are in. Okay, good, thank you. Just keeps getting better at, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
love it. All right, my friends, this is now, uh, we've hit time. I'm happy to take one more question if anyone wants to ask anything before I head off. All good? Awesome. I have All a right. question. Oh yes, go for it, Joanne. Um, on, on this system, uh, do you have evergreen? Is it an evergreen or can I set up an evergreen um, course? Absolutely, you can. Yes. So you can um, any of your products, any of your coaching programs, any of your memberships, any of your books, ebooks, anything that you add to the products area, you can have on a web page, on a funnel page available at any time. Your workflow behind the scenes will simply automatically send me my welcome email, check in with me at the frequency that um, you set. So you might simply say, uh, when someone buys this particular product, then send this welcome email, then wait for one week and then send this email, then wait for one week and send them this email. So it doesn't matter when anyone joins, they will get sent through the same progressive sequence of reminders or check-ins. Absolutely, that can be done at an unlimited level inside Techmatics. You can have unlimited products, create unlimited funnels, unlimited pages, and unlimited automations. You didn't forget a thing, huh? No, no, right? <laughs> Got your best. <laughs> Got your best. <laughs> okay, thank you. Pleasure. All right, guys, I do have to time out there because we've got other things to go to. I hope you found this tech toolbox useful. It's all these tiny little tips and tricks that you collect over time that are going to turn you into total tech ninjas, automate your life <laughs> and help people going forward. If you've got any questions ever at all, please remember that your first port of call is always, always this little chat bubble on the bottom right of your account when you are logged into your system we have actual real people on there 24 hours a day please note this isn't the techmatics website this is inside your account that this is a live agent um this here we have people mm -hmm. 24 hours click on the button click on the chat box and there will be somebody there 24 hours a day the staffing wages for this cost me a fortune. Please use and abuse this as much as possible. There are people sat there all the time. Um, this is unlimited support, 24 hours a day, okay? So you cannot out ask questions on this. You can go here all the time. You can ask as many questions as you want. If there are ever any really complicated issues you're having, you can request a Zoom call um, on here, but this is really the best place for you to go to not ever have to wait for appointments or wait for booking calls. Um, if you ever have a scenario where you want our tech experts to do something for you, to log into your account, to help you with something, that's where our done for you services come into play. OK, so support is here for troubleshooting, giving you guidance, telling you what to do, you know, uh, checking if there's any bugs for anything or anything like that. If you want us to actually do stuff for you, we love it. We absolutely love doing stuff for you. Um, so you're going to click on the Techmatics website and go to services. And this is where we have a whole bunch of done for you services. So if you click on, click here for done for you services, ta -da, we actually are building out a marketplace of all different kinds of services in here. And um, of course you always have, if we go to the next, we're actually making this page a bit bigger at the moment. We do have the page, uh, the section where you can just book for $50. Um, you're a tech expert. That's probably going to be the most common one that you guys are going to pick. If you need help with anything at all, just for an hour, um, pick this $50 service. And in that service, um, you know, we'll co go in with you. We will help fix things for you. Um, you can basically use our team as your VAs, basically, to, to do anything that you like for an hour of time. We have all of these other kind of services, setting up your phone numbers for you, <laughs> putting your application for you compliance if you want any of your web pages formatting images resizing your mobile responsiveness setup there's loads of different services on here that you can book and um, that is going to enable you to get stuff done without having to worry about hiring people or getting stuffed over by dodgy developers um, these are all our in-house team of highly trusted and incredibly um, experienced experts so thank you all very much have fun, enjoy the journey, and as always, happy teching! <laughs> <laughs> See you guys! Bye! Bye.